announcement says he will, in fact, be a candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, Trey Grayson. Thank you, Al, for that introduction. It's great to be back for my eighth consecutive Fancy Farm picnic. I'm glad to be here on stage with so many elected officials and special guests, but I want to begin with uh, congratulations to Allison and Daniel and Jack and in absentia Elizabeth on their new additions to their families. Uh, you're going to love being parents. Someday they will sleep. And don't worry, after November 2010, y'all are going to have plenty of time to spend with your new family. <laughs> It's a great honor to serve as Kentucky's Secretary of State. Wherever I go, I'm always proud to say that I am a Kentuckian. And lately, I've been even more proud than usual. You see, in Kentucky, it seems, we tend to figure things out a little faster than the rest of the country. For example, when Barack Obama asked for our votes last November, Kentuckians took one look at his plan for higher taxes and government-run health care as well as his attacks on coal and Kentucky values, and said, that's change we can live without. That's because Kentucky knows better. Unfortunately, the rest of the country took a little longer to figure this out. They put Barack Obama, Harry Reid, and Nancy Pelosi, in the driver's seat, and now they're driving this country off a cliff. First, first thing they did, they passed a stimulus bill without giving anyone a chance to read it. As a result, our debt will double in five years. Taxes are likely to rise so high, you'll swear you're in France. The only thing that bill stimulated is the unemployment rate, which is now 11% in Kentucky. That's why I'm proud that Jim Bunning, Mitch McConnell and Ed Whitfield voted the right way. Proving once again that Kentucky knows better. Next, their so-called cap-and-trade bill is really a new energy tax levied every time you start your car or flip on a light switch. It's anti-coal and it's anti-Kentucky. Cap-and-tax, that's a better term for it, it will cost Kentucky farmers and business owners over $5 billion over the next decade. That means higher utility bills, fewer jobs, and less take-home pay. But that's a liberal for you. They'd rather punish hardworking Kentuckians than force China or India to deal with their own environmental messes. That's why, as your U.S. Senator, I will never vote to put Kentucky's economy at a competitive disadvantage to the rest of the world. I have a better idea. How about we cap federal spending and trade this bunch in Washington for some folks who understand that we can't tax our way to prosperity? I suspect that even these folks over here agree with me because Kentucky knows better. But that's not all. They want to take over our health care. We all agree that reform is needed, but the solution is not more government control and ration care. Under the plans being discussed in Washington, we are well on our way to seeing the day when the doctor says, talk to two bureaucrats and call me in the morning. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think that's going to make me feel any better. Whether it's our economy, our energy policy, or health care, doctors Pelosi, Reed, and Obama want to write the same prescription for all of us, bigger government that we can't afford. Judging by the president's plummeting approval ratings, it looks like the rest of the country is finally catching on. It's clear we need a real check and balance in Washington. I am confident that we're going to keep this seat in conservative hands next November because Kentucky knows better. Kentucky knows better, that's right. Now, when you look at the U.S. Senate race in Kentucky next year, there's really a simple choice. On the one hand, you can find someone, you can choose someone who will fall in line with Obama, Pelosi, and Reid. Or you can choose someone like me, 
who shares our conservative Kentucky values and will always put Kentucky first. I'd be honored to have your vote. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all next year. God bless you.